Hello, this is Kinch, and I'm going to show you two mid-range decks. Uh, the U here probably being mostly pointed toward Ellie, uh, a guildie of mine who was asking about the meta in Popper, and it's not all aggro and control. There is some uh, mid-range decks, uh, and these are just the two that I have access to or I've played a little bit. I haven't really played the second one, but this first one is uh, Blue Black Control, uh, usually called Blue Black Trinket Control, and it's uh, there's a link I gave uh, to MTO, MTGO Strat, uh, I think that's it, dot com. Uh, also, they have a YouTube channel that has a bunch of these, and it's kind of the pet deck of these guys there, and they've played tons and tons with this deck. And I've done a couple. Looks very interesting. Uh, I think there's some difficult play elements to it, uh, but it has really well. If you're really good at it, they have slightly favorable matches matchups against two of the big contenders in the current meta game. But I just get rolled uh, by them by the post decks. Um, I'm just I I haven't played enough with this, and I not really a control type player, although. I'm willing to learn. Uh, so this this is the deck. Um, it's got a lot of removal um, and card draw, and that's pretty much how the deck works. There, you know, that it has different ways to win against different decks, but you don't have a huge uh, any kind of beater type of creature in this deck at all. In fact, I think the biggest thing the in here is a 2-2, two -two, uh, which are the Chittering Rats and Mold Drifter and the Trinket Mage. Um, but you have a ton of control. You have a way to gain life with the Life Staff here. Um, you have lots of ways to kill things. You have a bunch of tricks. You have lots of ways to draw cards. Um, one of the key cards in here is Grim Harvest, uh, which allows you to get a creature card out of your graveyard and then if something dies you can get the Grim Harvest back so if you're careful you can just recur something like Mull Drifter over and over and over and there are other little tricks that you can do uh, for example with Mull Drifter and Undying Evil um, uh, if you think about it it would occur to you but it's uh, if you, you play Mull Drifter for its evoke cost which means it just comes into play and then you have to sacrifice it uh, normally you just do that to get the card draw, just two cards. But if m you evoke the Mold Drifter, put the two triggers on the stack, which are entering the battlefield, uh, draw two cards, and you have you have to sacrifice it once it enters the battlefield. So put the sacrifice one on the first on the stack, then put the card draw on top. Let the card draw resolve. See what cards you have. Play Undying Evil on the Mold Drifter. Sacrifice the Mold Drifter. Undying Evil sees it go to the graveyard, so that triggers. And when that resolves, Mold Drifter comes back into play with a plus one plus one counter on it, and it does the draw two cards trigger. So for four mana and two cards, you draw four and get a three three flyer. It's kind of a nice little combo. Um, and there's other little tricks you can do with the, your edicts and the tragic slips and uh, fume spitters. But I'll show you one game I played um, against Stompy with it. I think I lost this series. Pretty sure I did. Um, but Stompy's a close, a close uh, matchup for this deck. Um, and I think I kept this. Although I think this is really slow with the Terramorphic Expanses and the Demir Aqueduct. Uh, I didn't know what I was playing when it, this in this first game, so I would probably not do this again. Three Terramorphic Expanses. Uh, although it does th thin your deck, it makes things go real slow, but you're not in a big hurry uh, with this particular deck either, so... But now that you see that I'm playing against Stumpy well, I don't see that I'm playing a Stompy yet. Um, I'm 
just setting up my mana. Okay, so that's a pretty good indication we're up against Stompy, so I need to hurry it up a little. Edict. Hopefully I don't forget the expanse. I do this all the time. I forget to crack the expanse. Costing myself time. Ledge Walker, which I can't target, but that's okay. I'll, this deck, a lot of the removal is not targeted. They're Edict effects or Crypt Rats. Um, which is very handy. Uh, crypt Rats. It's mostly to try to. I think you play the Crypt Rats there mainly to discourage them from playing more creatures so they don't get two for one. And here's another trick coming up. Can't block. I think there comes out a fight here with counters and stuff, but. Um, crack the Expanse. So I'm pretty sure what I do next is a, a stack trick um, that you learn to do with some of these uh, X, you know, uh, do X damage creatures with with abilities. Another one that does this is uh, whoops, I want the collection. Oh, that probably didn't help myself, did I? Is the... Hey, stop that. Quark Clan Shaman, which might be a little hard to see right now. Let me make this a little bigger. Uh, sacrifice an artifact. Quark Clan Shaman deals one damage to each creature without flying. So if you think about it, you would go, well, if I activate him once, he destroys himself and you can't do anything. But you, you can put all these activations on the stack. Uh, and in Magic Online, uh, to put things on the stack without giving up priority is you hit control while you're doing it. Uh, so if I wanted to kill a lot of things with a Kark Clan Shaman, I would just stack them up using control um, in order to do that. So that same trick is going to be done here on uh, the Crypt Rats because of Young Wolf. Because if Young Wolf dies, it comes back as a 2-2. Two -two. And you really don't want that, right? So, how do you kill this? You, What you do is you stack two things, uh, two activations of the Crypt Rats. So you, you first activate the Crypt Rats for two, and put that on the stack, and then activate them for one. So then when the when the stack resolves, you get the activation for one, killing the rats, killing the ledge walker, killing the young wolf. The young wolf trigger will go on the stack. Young wolf will come back as two. Then the second activate the well, the second activation of the crypt rats, which was the first that you did, for two will then kill the young wolf. That's the plan. Um, but we had a little fight over this. So there's the two activation. There's the activation for one. So the one resolves. Undying on the stack. Undying comes back. Now before the X2 comes out, I think he plays a uh, Hunger of the Hal Pack. Um, which will be three counters on his young wolf. I can now counter with Tragic Slip, which the, gives the creature minus 13, minus 13. Um, so I say, okay, well, if it means that much to you, let's go ahead and kill this. And I think he had a Vines in hand. 
So a little bit of a fight over this young wolf, uh, which I'm okay with because Stumpy has zero card draw, and I have tons uh, within this deck. So even though you end up with like, well, the nine nine young wolf right now, it's not going to stay that way. It's going to be a five five, but I do have a diabolic edict in my hand, so he won't live long. He'll he'll hit me once. Unless he lays another creature. But I also have Crip Rats in my hand, so I'm not overly worried. And I have a Trinket Mage I can go get a Life Staff with. Um, I mean, I think eventually, as long as he doesn't hit you really hard to begin with, um, this is a pretty decent matchup for the blue black deck. So I think I went and got the life staff. Yes. The life staff uh, it's not for the uh, in this deck you don't really care about the bonuses. It's whenever a equipped creature dies you gain three life. Um, and you can do a lot of recurring with uh, the, the grave uh, gosh I can't even remember the name of the spell recurring your creatures and you have creatures you can sacrifice so if I play Crip Rats I probably want to put the life staff on it anything you think is about to die play the Crip Rats there, but I guess I didn't want him to know that I had Crip Rats. So he doesn't attack into me, which is um, odd. If I was playing Stompy there, I would definitely... Uh, I think I would definitely swing in there, but with a sentinel and trade um, although it's hard to say because um, then you can get hit by an edict and lose the ledge walker too um, but I don't think you can win just hanging back um, the longer the game goes on against this deck the less chance Stompy has to win the game um, could be that he just has lands in his hands too I don't know but uh, Uh, I don't know. It just seems odd to me that you don't swing. Especially when you get stuff like this. That's a Executioner's Capsule, which is another... Uh, the in the, main, in the main deck, the things that the Trinket Mage can go get... Um, well, the Trinket Mage, in case you're not familiar, is that when it enters the battlefield, you can search your library for an artifact card with converted mana cost one or less and get it and get it into your hand um, main deck the only things that you can this deck has that the trinket mage can go get is the life staff the executioner's capsule there's two capsules um, which is uh, one in a black sacrifice the capsule destroy target non-black uh, creature and the vault of whispers um, which I think there are three of, I'm not 100% remembering how many there are but that's all that the, the trinket mage can get um, on the sidebar there's an extra life staff I think um, I'd have to go look at what else is available uh, for that slot but um, that's what is usually targeted in this uh, in this deck so uh, the capsule to kill the sentinel. Swing with the trinket mage.
crypt for rats so I can kill the ledge walker um, and then uh, Stompy gives up so unless Stompy gets you pretty quick with this deck it's pretty difficult for them to win but I think that's a, a kind of a typical thing for Stompy um, thing is that this deck has so much removal that it's really hard to um, for a creature based deck to kind of overwhelm it. I mean it definitely happens but uh, I haven't had a ton of experience uh, with that kind of thing. The, the ones I've played against is Kiln Fiend deck. I got run over because uh, I couldn't get my removal. Um, um, is it post ran me over? Fissure post ran me over. Uh, Stompy I'm even on. Boros Kitty smashed me for whatever reason. I can't remember that game. And is a post again. So I haven't really played a lot of um, creature based decks against this. But I think the deck's pretty fun. There's a lot of things you can do with it. Um, it's not, you know, it's definitely a mid range control deck. Uh, the other deck that I was going to show, which I hadn't played until uh, today, I did two matches with it, um, was Boros Kitty. And it's named that because of, the, I guess, the deck designer was named Kitty and Boros is red white. So this one is based upon playing a lot of artifacts and bouncing the artifacts and card drawing via the artifacts um, and other kinds of comes into play effects on the creatures and burn. Um, the removal basically is uh, Galvanic Blast, Lightning Bolt, make this window bigger da -da -da -da. lightning bolt um, journey to nowhere um, that's your basic removal although core sanctifiers will kill artifacts or enchantments if you kick them you'll have two of those in the deck you have core sky fishers that when you enter the battlefield you need to return a permanent um, seems to me that you end up returning Kabira Crossroads which is a land that gives you uh, gains you two life when it comes into play so you lay that down and pick it back up uh, Glint Hawk um, comes into play as a 2-2 two, two for 1 but you need to return an artifact you control to, to his hand which handily you have these Icker Wellsprings uh, when enter, Icker Wellspring enters the battlefield or is put into a graveyard uh, from the battlefield draw a card. So you can play the Icker Wellsprings, play Glint's Hawk, pick up the Wellspring, replay it. Um, so there's lots of card draw with that kind of shenanigans. Uh, Sanctum Gargoyle will get stuff that's in your graveyard and it's a pretty it's a 2-3 flyer, same as the core sky, sky fisher. Um, the only other creatures that you possibly could have have are from Koldaltha Rebirth. A sacrifice an artifact and you get three 1-1 one, one goblin tokens. It's a sorcery. Um, I tend to use them for blockers. Uh, remember the Fallen. Uh, you can get stuff out of your graveyard with it. So there's a lot of recursion going on in the in the deck. My problem with the deck was that it's so much stuff to do that I'm just too slow. My, and I end up timing out. and uh, It's just not you know, my kind of... Uh, I'm not great at it. So this, I end up playing two matches with it. I'm just going to show you one game and one of them was... Uh, both of the matches were against uh, White Weenie variants. Um, and the first one was Suicide White, and I don't remember if this is that match. And the other one was just a straight up white weenie. And both of them had a 2-3 uh, protection from mono color creature, which would just wreck me on <laughs> every time. Because I have no way to handle it. Absolutely no way to handle it. So, uh, anyway, let's see how this goes. Um, hopefully I picked a game that had lots of uh, tricks. Doom Traveler, I saw that one a lot. 
this to me is a fairly good, a pretty good card, and I, I misplayed against it at least once. Um, sorry, because uh, when it dies, you get a one-one spirit, white spirit creature token with flying. Um, so that seems to be pretty good bang for your buck. So my sense, like like Young Wolf, I probably should just let the one one ping at you unless they put suited up somehow. So I have a Glint Hawk, which I can't play until I have an artifact out. So I could go Ancient Din, Glint Hawk, pull back the Den, go. But now you've kind of crippled your mana base. Um, and looking at the rest of my... I guess you probably could do it since I don't have a whole lot of action going on, but um, I think I just played safely to see if there was something... We played something lightning boldable, then I would do it. Otherwise, I would just cycle the Forgotten Cave. Oh yeah, there's lots of there's like quite a few cycling lands in the deck as well. So there's a lot of card draw. So I think you're going to win a lot of games of attrition. Um, the problem, like the UB deck, is that you just don't have a lot of beef to punch through. Um, things and you have absolutely zero combat tricks aside from your burn spells which I've now drawn so see he has a similar thing going on and I saw the skyfisher in both matches as well. Um, I mean, it's a two-three flyer for two, with uh, you know what what might be considered a drawback of returning a permit to your hand. But some of these things, that's not really a a drawback. So I'm gonna play the Glint Hawk and bring back the Prophetic Prism because then I can play it again and get, draw a card. like so. And there's a wellspring. Yeah, this doesn't make me happy. Bone splitter. I think that's a questionable block on my part, because you just can get a 1-1 back and just put the bone splitter back on it. And I've basically netted nothing. I've just killed my doom, my hawk. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't, you know, like I said, I haven't played this deck. I don't know if that was the right play. It looks now to me to be silly. I think I did this in all my matches a lot. So they're spending my turn drawing cards and there's really <laughs> I don't know what I should be drawing for more card draw deck myself until sideboard I don't really have a way to get rid of all these little white weenies I mean electricery in the sideboard helps a lot uh, in this particular matchup but um, the first game not so much I think I made a mistake here uh, Oh, okay, it wasn't this game. At least one game I tried to uh, Lectris, uh, Galvanic Blast a, a Razor Golem because I'm so used to my decks having three artifacts out when I had, and then when I did it, I actually had two, so he didn't. I I screwed it up, but it's not this game. Cycle. play this, bring it back in so I could draw a card again. So, I mean, let's see. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven cards on the field, four in hands. So that's 11 and six in the graveyard, 17. I've almost gone through two-thirds of my deck, and this is what my board looks like.
I, oh, a third of my deck. And my board looks like this. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Not impressed. Uh, and it could be, too, that White Weenie's just a bad matchup. Well, maybe not a bad. It certainly was tough when I was playing it, but again, I don't have a ton of experience with this. Hey, Icker Wellspring, look, I could draw another card. And I drew up Skyfisher, which is fine. bring that in to start it all over again. So as you see, next turn I'm going to draw three cards probably. Really would like Electricery to deal with that thing. And again, I don't know about that, but you know, my life total is not ex ex exceptionally high. And I don't think the deck I'm playing against had any combat tricks. I didn't see any. Um, which would have been unfortunate. Well, this is good. Now I can use the Core Sanctifiers to kill the Bone Splitter. Uh, that's a good thing. So you keep drawing land, another card draw. Again, I mean that's I don't have a ton of experience with the deck, so there is a lot of burn though, which I drew into there, and there are a lot of ways just to draw a lot of cards. I mean, I'm almost halfway through the deck at this point. Kick the Acre Wellspring back, of course. Play the Acre Wellspring. So as long as I think you can solidify your, your board position like I have now, um, if I have a way to win, I'm going to draw into it. He's just, White Weenie is just going to run out of gas, has no card draw. Um, but it took me so much time to get to this point. I mean, time is in match time. Journey to nowhere. So I think right now, yeah, it's got to be right to to trade, right? I must. I'm going for the long game here. And I have uh, two cards in my deck that allow me to go get creatures and stuff out of the graveyard. So. I haven't seen those cards yet, but uh, they're there. I think they still end up losing this game. You don't want to use the Galvanic Blast on these spirits, but... And if I draw the... Okay, Golem, I do want to kill. More card drawing. So if you play this deck, this is what you are gonna have to learn how to to do better than me. And core sanctifiers. It's a good draw. I think there's only two in the deck. So I think now if I was to recur the Skyfisher somehow. Uh, I think that's a four of in this deck, so probably if I get another one, start bringing back the Sanctifiers um, into your hand. I can't have lost this game, could I? He says.
See, now this thing's just a problem for me. Protection from monocolored. Nothing in my deck can touch it. Nothing. And nothing to my sideboard. Um, I saw this in a couple decks. Um, protection from monocolored is pretty much protection from damn near everything in... Uh, in popper safe hold elite is not monocolored there's a couple other things that people play that are not monocolored um nivix cyclops is not monocolored but it's got defender um trying to think what other gold cards or um the frostburn weird i think people play um but it's mostly protection from a whole lot of stuff um, might be too late in this particular game. Okay, I still have uh, only 27 cards left on my deck. <laughs> now I have the Gargoyle. When it enters the battlefield, may return a target artifact card from a graveyard to your hand. But I don't think I have one in my graveyard. And I do not. But I do have seven points of damage that I can do to my opponent in my hand. So that's why we swing with everything. He's down to ten. I guess play this naked gargoyle here. Because I am on a four turn clock with the uh, guardian that I can't touch. Wow. Kind of out of card draw at this point. I think I should have just swung with everything there. Oh, I brought the, I kept the core sanctifiers back in case something weird would happen. I mean, I have, I have lethal here in my hand, but in case something weird happened and then he could swing back and pump, I wanted to have at least a blocker here um, to block the Cathar. That's why I didn't swing with it. But uh, blast to the face bolt to the face and I win uh, so yeah if you like playing out more than half your deck <laughs> in, a, in a game and you're quick um, it's an interesting deck it certainly doesn't lack for drawing cards and other kind of tricks there was you know the couple cards I didn't see the um, in that match including the uh, uh, remember the Fallen didn't show up. Oh, I think everything else did. Oh, Elsewhere Flask didn't. Um, which I always took out in sideboard. Um, uh, doesn't seem to be a critical, critical card in any kind of situation. Um, Oh, I didn't see Cold Off the Rebirth in that entire game either. Um, interesting. And Cold Off the Rebirth, I don't know if that would have helped me in that uh, uh, in that game, but it would have allowed me to sacrifice the um, the Icker Wellsprings and draw a card. Um, so it would have been nice to have those. And plus they could just be chump blockers. Um, so it's an interesting deck. Oh, and didn't have Faithless Looting either, which is draw two, discard two. Um, just hand filtering with flashback, more card draw. Um, so yeah, that's the, that deck. Um, I, I think this, this one, I've seen it 3-1 um, in Popper Dailies before, um, but it could be that the person piloted it was very good um, or even the creator of the deck I'm not 100% sure 
Um, but I see it around. Um, people play it. I, I think it's viable. Um, it's probably not something I'm going to play uh, very often, but uh, it's a nice change of pace. Um, but you know, it's not a it's not an aggro deck. It's not a long combo deck, but it's kind of mid range. Same thing with the trinket deck. So um, you do have options in Popper. I just wanted to to show those uh, that they are out there.